Mr. Let me follow the protocol list that I have in. Uh, excuse me if I spend all the required time acknowledging everyone who ought to be acknowledged this evening. My cabinet colleague, Senator, the Honorable Jennifer Batiste Primus, and Mr. Primus, Minister of Labor, Small and Enterprise Development, Mr. Halley Haynes, President of the Caribbean Confederation of Credit Unions, and the CCU Directors All, Mr. Joseph Remy, President of the Cooperative Credit Union League of Trinidad and Tobago. Ms. Nairi Braffitt, representative from the Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Nigel Stoddard, deputy director of the Financial Intelligence Unit. Councillor Clint Batiste, representative from the Port of Spain City Corporation. Ms. Natalie Willis, acting permanent secretary Ministry of Labor, Small Enterprise Development. Mr. Jerome Laveau, Acting Deputy Permanent Secretary, Minister of Labor and Small Enterprise Development. Permanent Secretaries of the various ministries, heads of divisions and heads of units. Ms. Andrea McKenna James, Acting Commissioner for Cooperative Development. Esteemed representatives of the local, regional and international credit union movement. Other specially invited guests, members of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I noticed that the speakers who preceded me from the various territories were very careful to establish their credentials to ensure that they had a place on this rostrum and they were qualified to be here some of whom brought their volcanoes, their <laughs> some brought their racehorses, some brought their food, and some, like my colleague, Mrs. Batiste Primus, brought her record of lifelong association with the Caribbean or the local credit union movement. That being so, I think I too must establish my credentials so that I can speak to you. I came out from the preparatory years of the cooperative movement and the school junior cooperative in Mason Hall Government Tobago, where I didn't only learn to raise chickens and sell eggs, but I learned to keep books in junior cooperative. And during my formative years, I at one time belonged to three credit unions at the same time, and today I still belong to one. So I'm qualified to be here, and I trust that you'll accept me as qualified to speak to you on this very important subject. But ladies and gentlemen, I have to admit that it was with mixed emotions that I accepted your kind invitation to t uh, deliver this address on the occasion of this year 61st, 61st Annual International Convention and Annual General Meeting. Pleased as I was to have agreed to do so, I was painfully aware that my acceptance of the invitation had been given at a time when the government of Trinidad and Tobago was not in a position to extend any more than non-fiscal assistance to the Cooperative Credit Union League of Trinidad and Tobago in assisting and covering the expenses associated with the staging of such a momentous undertaking. Allow me, therefore, to place on record the deep appreciation of the government and people of Trinidad and Tobago to the officers and members of both the Cooperative Credit Union League and to the Caribbean Confederation of Credit Unions for your indefatigable display of magnanimity and Caribbean spiritedness in having this convention staged here in Trinidad and Tobago in spite of our prevailing economic circumstances but in full acknowledgement and appreciation of the medium to long-term benefits 
which Trinidad and Tobago is sure to derive from your selfless endeavor. So here I am, grateful and delighted for the opportunity to share a few sentiments with your very distinguished audience. Ladies and gentlemen, safely and securely lodged among the archives of the Alma Jordan Library of the St. Augustine campus of the University of the West Indies is a unique collection of documents which tell the story of the early history of the cooperative credit union movement in Trinidad and Tobago. It is known as the Norbert Eriche Collection. Norbert Eriche was one of the many unsung pioneers of the cooperative credit union movement whose tireless and enduring efforts over several decades collectively and constructively paved the way for us to be assembled here today to engage in landmark deliberations aimed at further advancing the growth and development of the sector, not only here in Trinidad and Tobago, but throughout the Caribbean region and the world at large. The names of like-minded pioneers of the caliber of Thomas Malcolm Mill, generally acknowledged for introducing the concept to Trinidad and Tobago, Claudius Clunis, Noel P. Bowen, Peter Roach, McDonald Hines, Donovan Palmer, Fitzroy Dyer, and Gary, Gary Cross. Just to name a few, will forever remain indelibly etched in the annals of the history of the credit union movement in the Caribbean region. Ladies and gentlemen, no greater tribute befits their visionary endeavors than the reality that the credit union movement in the Caribbean region continues not only to be alive and well, but is growing astronomically in strength, stamina, and stature. Thanks to the spirit of continuity, commitment, and stick to itiveness on the part of those of you who have so loyally taken over the reins. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow cooperators, evidence abounds that the movement has come of age and has taken its rightful place with pride among the most sophisticated and distinguished family of financial institutions worldwide. And you have done so having journeyed confidently and triumphantly from the distant past of a colonial era when it was a way of life for commercial banks to heartlessly and indiscriminately turn their backs on the poor and underprivileged for reasons bereft of human kindness or devoid of the minutest modicum of genuine rational justification. It was of no consequence then whether the loan being sought was for the purpose of renting a home to purchase household appliances, purchase school books, or send a son or daughter overseas in pursuit of higher educational qualifications, or simply to pay for expensive, sudden medical attention, or to underwrite the cost of burial of a loved one. Thanks to the exemplary vision and foresight of our fathers and forefathers, those wretched days are behind us days when populations had to rely on high-risk, expensive, unscrupulous moneylenders, susu, or plain and simply securing their pennies, day in and day out, under the fiber mattress. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, thanks to the advent of friendly societies and the cooperative credit unions which came to our rescue and proved against all odds that they could have met the burdensome financial necessities that were deliberately and systematically denied us. The records show that the first evidence of credit unionism sprung up in Germany in the 1850s, and by the end of the 19th century had spread its wings throughout the European continent. Fast forward to today, when the movement prevails all over the world, and what do we find? 
the figures speak for themselves. Between the years 2007 and 2016, the number of credit unions worldwide grew from 49,134 in 96 countries to 68,882 in 109 countries. Membership increased from over 177 million in 2007 to just over 762 million by 2016. Savings increased from approximately $988 billion in 2007 to approximately $1.4 trillion in 2016. Loans increased from $848 billion in 2007 to $1.2 trillion in 2016. And assets increased from approximately $1.2 trillion in 2007 to approximately $1.8 trillion in 2016. And all those figures are in US dollars. The records also show that up to the year 2016, the number of credit unions in the Caribbean was 297, with a membership of just over 2.5 million. Shares and deposits amounted to 5.3 billion, and loans to 4.3 billion, and reserves standing at just over $650 million. The largest number of credit unions were registered in Trinidad and Tobago, with a total of 129 followed by Barbados with 33, Jamaica with 32, Guyana with 28, St. Lucia with 16, Grenada with 10. The smaller Caribbean states were not to be outdone, all having registered single digits, but credit unions nonetheless. Ladies and gentlemen, viewed from any perspective, this is remarkable growth and progress on an international dimension over any one decade. So that, ladies and gentlemen, when at your 61st annual international convention, an annual general meeting, you choose as your theme the topic, credit unions, the power to change the future, no subject could have been more instructive more eminently timely, and indeed more exceptionally visionary. And it is on this theme that I propose to focus for a couple minutes as I address you today. With the exponential growth and development of the credit union movement on the international stage, and the inevitable commensurate complexities which go hand in hand with this overwhelming phenomenon, Caribbean governments are duty-bound to work side-by-side side with the leadership of the sector in ensuring that financial operations are technologically sound, sensibly regulated, and continuously monitored and evaluated. These requirements are no different to government's obligations to its relationship with other similarly positioned financial institutions as the responsibility to protect and preserve the public interest becomes more acute and increasingly more demanding. Ladies and gentlemen, there is absolutely no doubt that growth has become a critical issue for credit unions worldwide. Growth in membership, growth in shares, growth in deposits, growth in loan portfolio, so it follows necessarily improvement in observation and regulation. There's absolutely no doubt that growth has become a critical issue. But ladies and gentlemen, in return on investment, growth in reserve by all accounts and growth in service offerings must be an area of focus for the governments of the region. Cut to the core Credit unions, by virtue of their own well-deserved development and progress, 
have dismantled the socioeconomic barriers and have elevated their status to a level no less prestigious or in great demand than those of other traditionally endowed financial institutions which hold consumer shares, savings, investments, and deposits in trust. You should therefore expect nothing less than to be held similarly accountable and by whatever appropriate mechanisms employed and as a consequence be no less subject to sector-specific consumer protection laws and regulations as well as security and sound business performance standards as do banks. Also, insurance companies, pension plans, financial lending agencies, trust institutions, mortgage companies, and similar type financial institutions, which are all regulated by the state for the protection of all participants. Recent practices within the investment, insurance, and credit union sectors of Trinidad and Tobago are enough to justify the imperatives for such mandatory fiduciary oversight. Initiatives to arrive at consensus and establishment of a mutually acceptable regulatory framework continue to be a work in progress. The principal objective being that of protecting the sanctity and the integrity of the public trust. The upside of this remains not only that shares and deposits are well protected, but that the movement gives itself the flexibility to develop and expand its service offerings. Emboldened, empowered, and enriched by financial regulatory best practices of the highest order, the power to change the future. In fact, our objective in the Caribbean should be to take a page from the Canadian experience where credit union members enjoy in many provinces higher levels of deposit protection than that which is available to the commercial bank customers. Ladies and gentlemen, credit unions in Trinidad and Tobago, which were originally regulated under the Credit Union Cooperative Societies Ordinance number 48 of 1945, are now regulated under the Cooperative Societies Act Chapter 8103 of 1971. You should need no convincing that since that time, the world of finance, the economy, and the dramatically changing landscape of social development have advanced leaps and bounds virtually beyond recognition and must somehow be impacting upon the credit union movement. But here is the dichotomy. Since the year 1949, a part of a government structure to oversee, guide, and develop their activities, credit unions have been supervised by the Cooperative Development Division under the legislative requirements of the Corporate Societies Act, Chapter 8103. This agency is a unit of the Ministry of Labor and Small and Enterprise Development. Under this arrangement, Cooperatives in Trinidad and Tobago are classified under two categories, financial cooperatives and non-financial cooperatives. It is under the financial cooperatives category that the credit union movement is anchored, organized as they have always been for the purpose of promoting thrift, providing credit at responsible rates, and offering other financial services for the benefit of all its members. While the mandate of the Cooperative Development Division includes promoting cooperatives as viable business enterprises and creating an enabling environment to contribute towards the socioeconomic development of its members, it is clear that the credit union movement has substantially outgrown its space and has now established itself as a worthy contender among the most highly regarded and respected families of financial institutions worldwide. But the real significance, true value, and full potential of this phenomenal growth and development will be lost to the world at large if, side by side, the movement does not come face to face with commensurate levels of independence, 
responsibility, accountability, authority, and maturity. Free from dependence upon commercial banks and private sector financial institutions to lodge your membership shares and deposits. Free to put the mechanism in place to compete aggressively if they, do so, if they so desire. And the provision of the widest range of financial services to all and sundry. I speak here about ATMs, purchase and sale of foreign exchange, wire transfers, letters of credit, debt and credit cards, etc. Financial instruments, the escalating costs of which eat away at the shares, deposits, and dividends so sacrificially and painstakingly accumulated. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, long before today, cooperative credit unionism has come of age. And we shall epitomize this only to the extent that we are prepared to walk the talk, take hold of the battle, and head towards completion of the final lap. Make no mistake about it. Power to change the future will call upon you to draw down from the wealth of merit of your proven track record. And above all, summon your richly gifted attributes of tenacity, grit, and determination and by no means least, your abiding and relentless passion for progress and excellence. Do we have any volunteers? Do we have those who are prepared to make the quantum leap to the next level of credit, credit humanism? In conclusion, may I once again thank you for the opportunity to have shared these sentiments with you and to wish you God's richest blessings and to go about your deliberations over the next two days with success and enjoyment. And for those of you who are visiting Trinidad and Tobago, welcome to the most beautiful twin island state in the Caribbean. And for those of you who want to compare Vinci Mass with Trinidad Carnival, try that on a Carnival Tuesday. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs>